Welcome to episode three of In the Valley and Beyond, a place where we take your everyday struggles and questions and put them into a biblical perspective to find hope and healing. I am Pastor Matthew. And I am Pastor Mike. And so Matthew, we're going to discuss three questions today that were submitted to us that all speak about kind of the same aspect of God. First of all, the one uh, in this conversation is that uh, the conversation about the Old Testament versus the New Testament God, and why does he appear to relate to us so differently today? Old Testament God says that thou shalt not kill, yet in Ecclesiastes it says a time to kill and a time to heal. God himself reminds us that vengeance is mine, well, then in the New Testament, God is so loving that his grace gives us Christ to die in our place. So why does God appear to change? Oh, Mike, you know, I see this come up all the time. Many people read the Old Testament and they're made, you know, they, they, they notice all this violence and, and fighting. And then they notice scriptures like vengeance is mine and there's a time to kill and then move to this New Testament story. And there's a seemingly passive loving God who gently gives up his life for us through his son, Jesus Christ, right? So people would go as far as to say that the God of the Old Testament is actually a God of wrath, while the God of the New Testament is a God of love, right? I mean, this is what we see so often. Well, see, this is where we could help clear some things up for them though, Matthew. So I'm glad that we're on this subject today. But what I was thinking is important, important for us today is in this podcast is to begin to clarify for our listeners the true nature of God. As we talk through these questions, we'll help them to understand, first of all, that we're reading about the same God uh, in the Old Testament as well as in the New. Secondly, that our God, uh, our God's nature and who he is and how he dealt with these things has never actually changed. From one testament to the next yeah exactly mike well said you know but uh, before we get into these points and, and these are points that i think are imperative to understanding this but i want to just quickly hop off this a little bit so that there's just something we need to understand in terms of interpreting scripture to reveal that he is the same god revealed in the old testament that is actually revealed through the new one and i'm just uh, appealing to the listeners to make a mental note here as we're going into this conversation because shifting from one testament to the next scripture more specifically you know the bible that we read today consists of 66 individual books and it was written on two or maybe even three continents and it was in in in, in three different languages over a period of approximately 1500 years and this was done by more than 40 authors. I mean, you know, talk about a range of thought that went into writing scripture. And even though it remains as one unified book from beginning to end without contradiction, we can still note the change in culture, right? As people and civilizations advanced, the, the Israelites and other civilizations, you know, by this time of the New Testament, they were no longer wandering or um, through the desert or taking over towns or waging wars. They eventually settled. So you see the change in their culture, the language changed, how they dealt with conflict and the law system changed. Their entire worldview began to change. And then to top it off, rather than the steady progression that it is hardly not noticeable throughout the, the Old Testament, suddenly there's a 400-year gap between the last Old Testament book and the beginning of the New Testament book. So much happened in those 400 years. And there's this huge change in language where they started speaking Greek and culture by then, especially with the influence of the Roman law system and the culture that had engulfed the nation of Israel at this time. So that's a, a note that I think we need to just keep in mind today. Those are definitely some great perspectives and great reminders of how we have the canon of scripture that we read today. And then we have this scenario where Jesus came into the plan as he was sent by God to redeem all mankind, right? 
while the violence and the wrath was still there, even though God gave man that free will to choose. Man made the free choice to sin and to act in violence through wars and destruction. We see even today, as uh, we see the current events and the headlines that happen in our world currently. But God's sovereignty doesn't mean it was God's violence or that he was in support of it. His wrath that is spoken of in scripture was not against man, but against the sin that men were participating in. And as a holy, yeah. righteous, loving God, he cannot tolerate, disregard, or allow sin within his realm of his nature because God always took vengeance on or wrath out on sin. And so many people miss this, Mike. I mean, God is holy and, and he's all sovereign. However, he's still given us the freedom to, to either seek his grace and pursue his holy nature or to turn from sin. You know, he gave us that choice. And if he didn't give us that choice, then our love for him, just it would be forced. It would be robotic. And, and it just definitely would not be real. Uh, that, that's something we need to understand. Amen. Amen to that. And I think this is a great foundation that we have built into the nature of who God is just by the things we've already shared. And and uh, with this, then it even covers then why we see such a shift in what God seemingly allows in the Old Testament to the new. So it's not that God has changed and that rather it's just presented differently because the violence we see in the world today is just as great as the violence we read about in the Old Testament. And all we have to do is read some of the headlines to see that this is the case. People mm. will always find ways to be more aggressive in their sin. God has always remained the same. In fact, James 1.17 tells us that God does not change like shifting shadows. Yeah, and, and you know, Hebrews 13 verse 8 also states that. Um, the writer of Hebrews says that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And you can take those promises to the bank, and we're so grateful for that, that we can see those things capture in God's word for us. He never changes. So if we look into his nature, it's very important then to note that in the Old Testament scriptures, as they describe God in these ways, on more than one occasion, they refer to him as a God who does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. We see this spread across so many verses. But if you, as a listener, want a reference to those verses, you can look into Psalm chapter 103, verses 8 through 10, and in Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. Yeah, and, and that's, those are two of so many scripture verses that actually refer to those exact two phrases. And I think it's clear to say here that, that God is a God of stability. I mean, God just never changes. He is just, he is fair. He's a God of love. In fact, in fact, Amen. John actually tells us in, in 1 John 4 verse 4 that God is love, right? And, and, and Mike, um, I want to quickly touch on something that was included in the initial question because you spoke about um, you know, why is God so different? God speaks about don't kill. But then he goes on and, and the, the person who asked the question referred to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 3, where he mentions that there's a time to kill and a time to heal, right? And I just want to note here that those were not God's words, right? Uh, this was King Solomon who wrote this in all his wisdom, not to condone killing or to tell us that God has changed his mind, but rather he's actually... I'm referring to something completely different. He's rather asserting that our life uh, is subject to worldly influence. And our lives will have its seasons. Some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be bad. But this is just as everything else in nature. It has varying cycles and rhythms. And, and people have fallen into sin, away from God's holiness and grace. So, so that means our seasons are subject to our decisions and the decisions of people around us, Mike. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think this will move us on to the next question that we have for today. And someone asked this, why does a loving, good God allow bad things to happen? Yeah, and, and I see how this is tying into our first question. It's it's all coming together, Mike. And 
we've managed to lay the foundation of the nature of God already. All right. And this is, speaks so nicely into these questions. But in all seriousness, it's actually such a concern among so many Christians, Christians that don't totally understand because God is meant to set us apart from all the other religions, right? All right. those beliefs throughout the centuries where people have worshipped false gods of wrath and anger who controls with an iron fist. And, and these gods that they worship, um, false idols and stuff, they condone bad things for some sort of self-gain. But, you know, we need to understand the God that we serve, Mike, and how different he is, what sets him apart from the rest. Indeed, Matthew. And this is why we're doing this podcast. Our God sets us apart. We have just established that God is a God of love. God is merciful and he's so gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love towards us. Yeah. And I think that anyone that has encountered God should know this, Mike. I think sometimes the questions that uh, some have asked is if God has the ability to end all pain and evil and suffering, then then why doesn't he just do it? Why doesn't he just snap his fingers and, and end it all and bring us back to paradise or something like that, you know? Well, we definitely can try to draw those conclusions as to why he doesn't do those things. But uh, I think it's it's also just a valid question for us to kind of wrestle with because our God is big and he's awesome. And it's something that many of us has asked at some point, whether we're grieving someone, we felt a loss, a sting of pain, whatever that might be, or evil. And so that question does come up often. Why, why God, why don't you assist? And we did have our touch on this early in the podcast. We do live in a world of pain and suffering for sure. And there is no one who is not affected by the harsh realities of the life that we currently live. And I think that we should consider these three things as we think about this uh, conversation about evil and suffering. And first mm -hmm. of all, we are born into a sinful, fallen, imperfect world. I mean, just look around yeah, us. For sure. You bring along to figure that out, right? Yeah. Secondly, human beings are not eternal, infinite, or omniscient. So therefore, we cannot fully understand God's purposes and plans for us at all seasons, all generations. There is no, no yeah. possible way. Third These ways are higher. Indeed. And, and even if God is sovereign and he has still given us a free will. And in other words, so much of what we face in our world today is a result of the choices of man and the sin that they perpetrate that comes across as evil. Yeah, man. Mike, we are so imperfect. And I, I do think, however, that we need to understand that the sin or this evil, this imperfection that we are now subject to because of sin, right? Now, that, you know, Paul tells us in Romans 1 verse 18 that none of it actually came from God. Because yeah, God is perfect. He is holy after all. Evil cannot exist within his nature. So he is not a, a hard, angry, evil God. In fact, Evil happens when it when something happens outside of God's nature, outside of his will, and, and outside of the directive of God. Right. And I think we're on to something, Matthew, here as we continue through, and that when we act outside of God's will and nature, it's generally contrary to who he is. This is what the devil attempted to achieve in the Garden of Eden when he deceived Adam and Eve into sinning, right? Sinning meant mm. going against God's will and directive over their lives. They had to step out of his will in order to do what God told them that they were not allowed to do. Yeah, and, and you know, God has never given a directive for evil or for anyone to go against any moral character. He's never done that. And, and right. I think this speaks exactly to why he then maybe allows evil, Mike. It's, it's not because he wants evil or because he's trying to push evil. It's, it's imperative for our listeners to know that God promised man free will. Free will. Scripture tells us that God is not a man that he should lie. So for him to break that promise, for him to interfere or force the choices of man would actually breach that, that directive that he gave man, right? And as... And as was mentioned earlier in the podcast, 
you know, love cannot be coerced. We cannot force love upon someone. We cannot force someone to love us or God cannot force us to love him because it cannot be true love if it's programmed into us. You know, that it's not real if it's been forced. And in right. order for our love for God to be true and real, if we did not have the ability to reject God, then neither would we actually have the ability to truly love him. So that choice needs to be there. That free will is in place for a reason. Right. So we can conclude in saying that God is good. Human beings are not. And God allows evil in order that we retain our free will and have the ability to truly choose him out of that free will that he has given us. And God has yeah. given us this way back to him through the price that Jesus paid for us on that cross. So without interfering in our free will, he has just helped us to escape the consequences of our sinful nature by allowing us to choose to accept what Jesus did for us, for each and every one of us. And uh, if you want to explore this topic in even further detail, we suggest you pick up a copy of Josh McDowell's book called When God Doesn't Make Sense. It will be a great addition to your library, as well as something you might want to give away to someone else who might be asking these similar types of questions. Well, I think that sums it up nicely, Mike. Um, maybe you can, I, I, I thought there, there was one more question that I, I've heard, and maybe this just relates a lot to what we've been chatting around today. So a third question, and I thought maybe you can just come up with something in all of this, because um, you have brought up that Jesus paid the price for our sin, but then why does God allow, if, if Jesus paid that price, why does he still allow people to go to hell? Hmm. that's uh again one of those questions that we wrestle with and uh thanks for that and one thing is has become clearer and clearer as we've been through this discussion today that god is perfect he is good and he is righteous he is holy and he is just and as we have the free will to choose we can also choose to stand with god or we can choose to turn away from god all who commit sin will go to hell because they have failed to meet his righteous standard by their choices. God does not send people to hell for breaking his laws, but instead because they do not choose to receive him as their Lord and Savior, Matthew. And that's really what he wants. And we were reminded of this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, where it says mm. that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth. And under the earth and every tongue shall acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah, nicely said, Mike. I think this conversation has been good today. And as as we bring this topic to a close for now, um, I just want to, you know, why don't we just end off with some encouragement for the listeners? Definitely want to try to do that for them today. So in conclusion, Matthew. We trust our listeners have been helped by realizing that our God is sovereign. And in his sovereignty, he will act justly and with great compassion for his people, for us, his people. Our God is not and will not change. What does happen, however, is that people get to experience him through their circumstances, through their situations. And he is dedicated to redeeming all mankind from the Old Testament to the New Testament and every generation since, and ours that's represented today. He wants to redeem yeah. us. We realize we put a lot into this for this consideration for this podcast, Matthew, but uh, we just want to thank the listeners for sticking it to the end, sticking out to the end, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, certainly, Mike. And, and I just want to say, be sure to, to, to share this podcast with your friends, with your neighbors, loved ones, you know, co-workers, classmates, yeah, whoever it might be in your life that you feel might be struggling with the God of the Bible not making sense to them. Because we trust that this is a great tool and a resource for helping to bring some of those people to trust in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, they they need it. 
And um, we pray that this will be such an encouragement to others and it will bring a greater understanding on a lot of these questions. But that's all for us for now today. And um, I pray that you guys will be blessed by this. Pastor Mike and I um, greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just say, may you have a blessed week ahead. Take care. God bless. Thank you.